going back to the man who sold the world. <laughs> right. That's Mick Ronson's guitar showcase. Uh-huh. And if you if you can't pick up on the greatness of Mick Ronson, oh, I love him. then go play on the freeway, no, like I said he, before. Yeah, he's he's the greatest. I have and a Rhino Bender fuzz pedal. It's the best. But he's part of the the wild troop or you know whatever it's called and and it was bob dylan thinking my my two favorite artists right now are david bowie mm-hmm. and lou reed lou and reed. Lou, um mick ronson played a big role in the spiders from mars and yeah. all of david bowie's greatest recordings yeah and he also played a did, role did you see that documentary on mick ronson I haven't. Dude, it is incredible. There's it's a documentary out about him, that, and, it, and it talks about how underrated he kind of w- was in terms of inventing that, bo- that that era of that Bowie sound and not really kind of getting full. Well, he also was responsible for the orchestration, right. all of those yeah. all of those string parts, right. those brilliant, exactly. those brilliant genius. Like yeah. you can't you can't place this guy on a mountain high enough. No, it's really true. It's really, you know, and, really and the, the brilliant thing about Mick Ronson is yeah. he um, came off the tip. There was a triumvirate of British guitar players mm-hmm. that included Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page, who all played in the Yardbirds. Right. And Mick Ronson could have easily played in the Yardbirds, one of the greatest rock and roll bands ever. hmm so getting back to Bob Dylan and his wild troop or whatever it's called, I had no interest in watching it because I heard the story of why Mick Ronson was brought into it. Why? And that was because Bob Dylan at the time, Loved his, David his Bowie. love of David Bowie and his love of Lou Reed, it's like, I got to be like them. Right. So how do I be like them? That's well, I'll call up the guitar player who played on those records and Mick Ronson it couldn't have been a worse fit. Right. It, at one point, they're playing a song, and Bob Dylan, it, it's like, there, there's a guitar, Mick Ronson does a guitar solo, and the song just goes on and on and on and on, like some of Bob Dylan's songs can, turn into a 10-minute opus or what have you. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, here's another opening, and it's, perfect time for another guitar solo and Mick Ronson steps up to do the solo you know do a different solo because he's capable of not repeating himself Uh when it comes to this create creative thing and all of a sudden Bob Dylan's like oh no this is this isn't this shit's not supposed to be happening and he looks at the drummer and says just end this right here right now Mm -hmm. like cut this guy off and it was uh, I didn't even see it I just heard the story I heard how Mick Ronson really shouldn't have been there in the first place. Right. Mick Ronson um, apparently had been asked to join Sparks, Uh one of the greatest pop bands, one of the greatest bands to come out of out of out of Pacific Palisades. The brothers. Are they UK now? Well, well, no, they went to the UK. They went to. They got famous in the UK. And they put out three albums on Island that Mm -hmm. are brilliant from start to finish. I got to meet those guys once. And they're brilliant. They're really great guys. Yeah. I witnessed a concert down at Madame Wong's West. One of my friends had uh, invited a band from Australia to come over. He was going to sign them to either Slash uh, Slash Records or Ruby Records, Mm -hmm. which was responsible for X and Fear and Violent Femmes and Early Los Lobos and the Blasters and the Gun Club. Let's, Let's not fail to mention the Gun Club. And let's cap it all off with the Germs, that yeah. one Germs record, which is genius. Listen to, Listen the, to germs. the Germs. Yeah. Um, he brought them over from Australia. They were here for a year. They played four shows. That was all they could get while they were here in, 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 in the one year that they were here. I saw two of the shows. They were one of the most brilliant rock and roll garage rock bands I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. Perfect from Australia, all a bunch of criminals. You know, that's everybody on that island, that that giant rock. They're all crooks and thieves. That's right. It's in their blood. But anyways, they played at a place called Madame Wong's, and I'm at this particular show where Chris D records their set 
off of the board onto cassette. I'm standing there and I'm looking around. The crowd is just really not existent. Mm -hmm. Maybe 12 people, 20 people there. And this band's just tearing it up, just ripping into it. And I look to my left, and the guy that's standing next to me is the youngest male brother. He, was the, he played quarterback on the Pacific Palisades High School team, and he's the guy with the falsetto voice. Mm-hmm. You would say, this guy, was, this guy could never participate in sports. This guy had to be on the debate team. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this guy was probably, if he did participate in sports, he was on the tennis team. Mm-hmm. Um, or he was the water boy for the football team, but he ha- happened to be the quarterback on the team which meant he got to fuck all of the cheerleaders Mm -hmm. good for him so um (laughs) mick ronson turned down the opportunity to become a member of sparks to go out on the bob dylan special extra rolling thunder rolling thunder Uh, for mick ronson it would have been called the rolling blunder right which is really sad and pathetic, but that's Bob Dylan. Anybody, when Bob Dylan snaps his fingers, everybody lines up to do his shit. And Are you a fan of Bob Dylan? I hated Bob Dylan for a zillion years. Why? And then I grew up and realized that he was one of the, he's one of the greatest lyricists. Yeah. All of that early stuff, all of that folk stuff, and then when he got the electric shit going on, all of that stuff when he, on when, when he started 61. when he sto- it's all over now baby blue is that's one a, of the greatest songs ever fucking written it's incredible what about lou reed yeah um lou reed i i lou reed was um my introduction to the velvet underground wasn't because i listened to the velvet underground i thought the velvet underground were boring really boring 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 why i um because they were just they didn't they didn't rock my planet i need black sabbath and alice cooper and grand funk i need uriah heap and deep purple i need shit beating me over the head right i don't need any whamby pamby stuff i love love that first velvet underground record though well we're gonna get to the velvet underground because I saw um, I saw David Bowie in 1972. He was my introduction to Lou Reed, mm-hmm. who I would see on the um, the um, the I want to say his second solo album on RCA. I saw him play Which one was his, that? his backup band were some just a bunch of like long blonde stoner dudes out of a high school in in Brooklyn somewhere. Mm-hmm. And he actually took them on tour and I saw him at the Santa Monica Civic and it was like nuts. Right. So my introduction to the Velvet Underground is from David Bowie right. to Lou Reed. Yeah. And in and there sandwiched back. in sandwiched in there is Mata Hoople. Uh huh. Sweet Jane. Yeah. You know, oh, right. Mata Hoople doing an in it's just a genius version of Sweet Jane. Yeah, Ian Hunter's still out there rocking it like eighty. It's crazy. Thank you. Oh, that steak looks good. Yeah.